one. And we are live. Hi. So let's give everyone a little, just a moment to hop into the to hop into the live stream. <laughs> Make sure that everybody's hydrated. Hi, Anne. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. You guys are going to track the questions, right? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, got that for you. Awesome. Ken, welcome. I can do my little virtual background. Oh, fancy. <laughs> I want to be a peacock. <laughs> uh, or do I want to be up in the clouds? Oh my gosh. That's usually the one I choose. I like that one. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I took that picture myself. Oh. Fremont Park in Richmond. Got it. Yeah. Hi, Paige. Welcome to. Hi, Dana. <laughs> Yeah, we just, I just had to do a wardrobe change after dancing with you. That was an amazing segment. Thank you. <laughs> now we are regrounded, we're rested, we're hydrated, <laughs> and we're grounding here with Kelly Sparta. Kelly is just an amazing everything. But, <laughs> but to put it succinctly, uh, Kelly is a transformational shaman. And she focuses on helping people from, well, from a lot of things. But one of these areas is from challenged childhoods, how to claim their space, set their boundaries, own their power, internalize their value, and also learn to love themselves. And it sounds like a lot of uh, what we're doing and what we're healing and what we're needing. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well. Um, it's a beautiful day here in Virginia and I've been out on my front porch and soaking up the sun and, uh, you know, it just, I work from home most of the time. So there's not a lot different for me right now, <laughs> <laughs> except that my husband's home with me, but <laughs> got it. <laughs> so, um, what are we talking about today, Kai? <laughs> Yeah, totally. So, well, one is what we like to call the elephant in the room, right? <laughs> Things may not have changed. <laughs> yeah. Things may not have changed much for you, but, um, you know, for us, our situation is that, well, one, we get to be here together. Uh, so that's been pretty cool. Um, and also there's, you know, there's some things going out th on out there in the world, um, which we haven't really been in much you know we've been in our internal world and also inside of this house uh, together in this space that we're uh, co-creating um, and you know it's so funny that I've seen all of these articles you know about the shamanic perspective of this the shamanic perspective of that what do you feel as a practitioner is your shamanic perspective of uh, you know the situation that's going on here well, so the shamanic perspective is is generally from a place of personal power, mm -hmm. right? So if you want to think about, you know, what does it mean to be from a shamanic perspective? Yes. Uh, you know, shamans are all about one, being in connection with the earth and two, about being in their own power. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, there's a lot of other things. And if you ask a hundred shamans what being a shaman is, they'll give you a hundred different answers. But um, those two things that we, we generally agree. So, um, but, you know, when you look at it from a, a, a personal power perspective, right? When you look at it from a place of, um, you know, how do I stay in my power in the midst of this feeling of being completely out of control around the virus and everything else that's going on around the virus with quarantines and lockdowns and the blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. um, and people making good or bad decisions and us having no control over that. So um, all of that. The, the upshot is that from a personal power perspective, all you can do is all you can do. And in, unless you have direct control over something, 
you can't do anything about it. Mm. And so therefore there is no point in spinning yourself up about it because there's nothing you can do, right? Uh, whether that's um, the, the empathic angst of over identifying with people who are in the hospital or, or healthcare workers or things like that. And just being like on the floor in your misery for them, you know, that, that doesn't serve them and it doesn't serve you. It doesn't serve anyone for you to be in that level of angst. And so to really pull back from the things that you cannot control and to be present to the things that you can, which is, am I keeping myself safe? Am I keeping my family safe? Am I, you know, you know, taking care of us within the environment that we're in? How am I feeling right now? What's yes. important to me? What do I need in this moment? If I need to be social, let me reach out and call someone. Do I need to, to feel the sun on my face? Let me walk outside and feel the sun on my face. Let me feel like I'm not trapped, right? Um, you know, the, the emotional needs, how do I, uh, it, I'm people who are living alone right now and who are quarantining alone, that's very socially isolating. It's very, for those of us who are high touch people, that can be very challenging as well. My, my love language is touch. And so, you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm a snuggle girl. I'll lean <laughs> into you. I'll hug you. I'll, I give some of the best hugs on the planet. And, um, you know, if I'm alone at this time, how do I take care of my need to be touched? Do I need to just like run my hands along my own arms and, you know, along my legs and my belly and my back and, you know, to just make sure that my nerve endings are getting the, the proper yumminess that they need? Uh, for me to be mentally well, right? Um, so there's just, there's a lot of things that we need to be paying attention to ourselves. And, and I know some people are going to be like, well, that sounds awfully selfish. And it's like, well, no, <laughs> it's not selfish. Um, Monique Darling and I did a, did a whole talk on this, <laughs> um, but uh, it's on my website. So it's on my, it's on my, uh, my, my YouTube. So if you go to my YouTube, you'll find it. But we did a whole talk on it. It's not selfish. Uh, it is, it's self-care. Selfish is I'm going to take away from somebody else hmm. what they need because I want to, not because I need it, just because I want to, just wow. because I want to deny them. That's selfish. Okay. Or I'm going to take something they need because I need it and I'm not going to share that selfish. Right. But, you know, going out and spreading a virus because you think you're immune, that's selfish. Right? Mm. Okay. That's selfish. But to, to pay attention to what you need to pay attention to your, uh, your um, feelings and your, desires and your wants and your needs, that is the utmost of good self-care. And it is actually what makes us safe humans. When we do not pay attention to our own needs, our needs will still come through, but they will come through unconsciously and they will cause us to behave in ways that are unpleasant to others mm. and sometimes to ourselves. Um, I, you know, when I was not paying attention to my needs, I would give and give and give and give until I was beyond empty. And then I would go and do something completely ridiculous, like walk past a line of people waiting for a seat in a restaurant and go sit at an empty table. Wow. 20 years ago, that was me huh. because I was so empty that I needed to be taken care of right then. And I didn't have the patience to allow it to be, to come when it was in its time because I had not taken care of myself so much that I had no choice but to ex just to be ridiculous mm. and obnoxious. And, and that's what I was doing. I was being ridiculous and obnoxious, but I didn't know how not to do it that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so over the last 20 years, obviously I figured out how not to do that. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, the, the quick and easy answer is give yourself what you need early and give yourself what you need often, right? Yeah. You know, even give yourself what you want early and what you want often, but that requires being aware of it, right? Absolutely. And so this is our time to go inside and to really pay attention to what our needs are and what our wants are and to start doing that fulfillment process. If we're not feeling loved, how do we feel loved? 
Mm -hmm. Well, if you're not feeling loved, reach out and hand some love to somebody else. Oftentimes that gets you some love back. Okay. Yeah. If you're not feeling loved, go in and read. If you've got old love letters from somebody and you got to stay in the love, don't go into the, oh, how we broke up. (laughs) (laughs) Stay in the love, right? (laughs) Uh, Go back and remember all the times when people loved you and just take all that love in. You know, there's, there's lots of ways that we can fulfill our own needs if we pay attention and we think creatively. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to read some comments for you, Kelly. Uh, We've got uh, Ken Matt, who says, Kelly is amazing. So glad to have her on your program. Yes, we absolutely agree with you. (laughs) Dana says, love that. Selfish is thinking you are immune to the virus and going out and about. Self-care is taking care of your own needs. How perfect. And one of these, um, one of these uh, essential nutrients <laughs> that I feel has come up a lot, um, you know, is the the pandemic of gratitude. You know, there's been so many like gratitude practices that have been public, and uh, you know, a lot of times that that one gratitude that we're missing is the one for ourselves. How do you feel about that, Kelly? <laughs> well, my, my friend Noah is actually leading one of those. Noah McIntyre, he's leading Discover Gratitude. And um, and it, it, the man is amazing, just for the record. He was raised as a, at the foot of Titnot Han when he was like four years old. Oh my God, yes. Um, but a uh, very good friend of mine. <laughs> he was the best man at my wedding. That's how good a friend he is. <laughs> wow. Um, but he's actually leading it too. And, and you know, it's been really interesting because um, my mother-in-law is a minister and we were on the phone last weekend and, um, and I was talking to the family and I was saying, look, you know, I'm, I'm in great gratitude right now. I'm in great gratitude that I have sufficient money in the bank that I don't have to worry about feeding myself and keeping myself housed and, you know, paying my bills and everything else. I'm in great gratitude that I bought way too much. (laughs) I did. I went to BJ's twice in two weeks. And the second time I went, I bought enough to fill the house and I already had filled the house and I forgot. And <laughs> my, husband had, my husband had gone to BJ's the week before and then I went and then I didn't realize what we didn't have for freezer space. So um, I was really grateful that a friend of mine had just come out of the hospital from having had a stroke and, and she hadn't had time to shop and she couldn't go out cause she's at risk now. And, and so she had a friend of hers come over and I just gave her a massive tub of food and a big thing of toilet paper. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it was just like, oh, good. I was wondering why I bought so much. And now I know. Now I know why. Right. It's just like, um, but I was in gratitude that, you know, we could do that. You know, it was like two, three hundred dollars worth of groceries. And we didn't even think twice about it. We were just like, yeah, go enjoy. You know, <laughs> we need call us. We've got freak dogs. Right. Um <laughs> And there's just this place of, you know, because my husband and I have both lived in in times in our lives where we didn't have it, where this would have been catastrophic. And, you know, we know exactly what that's like. You know, he was in food service up until about five years ago. So he was working at Panera. Um, And, uh, you know, we talked about it last night, actually. I was like, can you imagine how we would be if that was the case now? You know, that would, it, that would make it challenging. You know, we would be draining our savings to, to make ends meet at this point. So, you know, and having just bought a house, that would be problematic. <laughs> so, um, you know, we're, but that's the other thing we're grateful for is that our pipes burst in our apartment in November, which caused a cascade of events that caused us to buy this house. Mm-hmm. And now instead of being in an apartment, we are in a house where we can actually go out into the backyard and still be socially distanced. And how grateful am I for that? I can't even tell you. We're having fires out at night every night and we're hanging out in the yard during the day and soaking up the sun. It's just awesome. (laughs) Um, And we can do that because it's our yard. And so we don't have to worry about other people coming through the space. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, I feel very blessed to have these things. And I remember when I didn't. And I just want to speak for a minute to that because I'm sure some of the people listening are in that boat. And what I want to mention to you in this moment is that those of us who are blessed to have this, 
are feeling very blessed. And if you are not blessed, you should reach out to your friends, to your family, to the people that you know, and ask for help. You know, we know the government's supposed to be putting stuff together, but, you know, who knows how long that's going to take. Mm -hmm. And if you, you know, if you don't have food, you need to tell somebody. Don't tough it out. Don't sit there and go, oh, well, you know, nobody cares. You don't know that nobody cares until you put it out there. Mm -hmm. Don't assume. You know, I, my, my aunt made a comment on Facebook the other day that, you know, they were having a hard time keeping food on the shelves, which I assumed was, you know, they're in West Virginia, rural West Virginia, and they were having a hard time finding food in the grocery store. And um, I assumed that's what she meant. And then she said, oh, I guess we're just going to have to wait for the government check. And I was like, are you guys okay? And mm -hmm. so I called my cousin. And I'm like, are you guys okay? And she's like, yeah, we're fine. I'm like, do you have money for food? And she's like, yeah, we do. I said, okay, because if you don't, you call me. <laughs> and she's like, oh, okay. I haven't <laughs> talked to her in two years. But I'm like, <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, no, you know, it's don't let people go hungry. Right. And so, you know, don't be afraid to reach out. She was floored that I had called. Mm. But, you know, I remember when I didn't have it. Mm -hmm. And there, every single person who has has it right now you know many of us remember when we didn't so please if you're hungry reach out and ask somebody you know there are people around you who will share okay yeah totally it's and i practice in self-care yes <laughs> your theme for the day <laughs> totally. self care saturday yeah <laughs> I would like to just welcome Chloe to the stream. Michelle, welcome. Debbie, welcome. Maria, thank you for being here. And uh, I do want to take this time too to, to check in with Del. How are you feeling about the area of self-care versus selfishness and so forth? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, self-care is definitely very important. And while Kelly was explaining it, all I was visualizing for myself is that cup. <laughs> and of course we're that cup and it's when that cup's not full and we give it out mm -hmm. and just keep giving and giving there's nothing to give for ourselves but when we put ourselves first in regards to filling up our own cup one we're able to just overflow and give and then two we don't have to rely on external things to give us what we're looking for and for my own journey i've been on both sides of the spectrum in which when I wasn't filling my own cup up with giving myself love and appreciation and um, all those, I could go through the list. <laughs> we, we know what it is. <laughs> uh, what I was doing was just searching for it externally um, for it because I felt, oh my God, I need this. I need, I need this person to love me a certain way. Mm -hmm. I need to, I need to feel appreciation from this person a certain way. And I'm visualizing myself as a baby, like, wah, 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 <laughs> and a little baby. And, um, of course, what happens from that is we're putting the expectation on the universe to act a certain way in the form of these people. Mm. And what happens when you put expectations on external things that happen a certain way? One, you're trying to control the uncontrollable. And then two, when it doesn't happen your way, I mean, sometimes it may happen that way. You might get lucky. But when it doesn't, we feel devastated. We feel not worthy. We feel like this way. We want to be a victim mm -hmm. of circumstances and uh, once I really started focusing more on filling my cup up with those things and giving myself the space for the love, the appreciation, all those energies I was searching for and filling my cup up with it, I give it out freely to people. I give out love. I give out appreciation to people. I am able to help other people because I'm helping myself so much. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm good. Check it. It's like checking. I'm good. So I want to make this person feel good, too. I want to make this person feel good. Mm -hmm. I want to make this person feel good. It reminds me of the was it Tom Cruise and Oprah show. Remember that? I, like, I love Giddy Holmes. I love Giddy Holmes. Like jumping around <laughs> and sharing all the energy. So that's what it feels like for me. And the selfish or the selfish side of things, you see what's happening with this external, um, I call it the reflection from the universe in the form of the coronavirus, this reflection that's really bringing up triggers and traumas in people right now. And they're having to be really present to what's going on and also present to your emotions because a lot of distractions 
that we had to like keep us away from really sitting with ourselves and our emotions. We don't have them anymore. We can't go out, socialize, go to parties and things like that. But also what I've been seeing too is that that survival mode, the fight or flight mode. Mm-hmm. In which, of course, like this whole toilet paper thing that's going on, people at the supermarket mm-hmm. fighting over toilet paper, mm-hmm. and also food. And you saw videos like people were like snatching it from each other, feeling like, "Oh my god, oh my god!" They're trying to herd type of thing. And I love what Kelly mentioned, like what she's doing, she's offering, mm-hmm. and that's what we're shifting into this unity consciousness. It's happening, but of course, right now, a lot of people are going through the the journeys they need to go through to get to this place, but. Yeah. For me, I see this beautiful thing that's emerging of this unity consciousness, people who are offering to help each other, and we're in this together. People coming up with like all these brilliant ideas that are happening, this summit that's happening, which all these amazing souls we get to share our unique flavor of the universe to help people to just pick whatever ice cream you like and make your Sunday. So <laughs> that's what it feels like for me. What about you? Well, you actually bring up a really good point, and uh, this is what I love to talk about uh, with you, Kelly, is what happens when giving goes overboard, you know? Yeah, well, and that's an important one to talk about right now, because yes. so many people are healers, and, you know, they're they're sitting there going, oh, I've got to heal all of the coronavirus <laughs> all by myself. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> It's like, no, no, that's not how it works. <laughs> so, you know, there's, when we, when we don't take care of ourselves, we try to take care of others to an extent that is overwhelming for us. Um, and it's like, we're trying to take care of them so that they will take care of us. We've, we've signed this silent contract with the universe that says, I'll take care of you if you take care of me, except that the universe doesn't know that anybody else signed it. So <laughs> nobody else knows that you signed it. So you're just sitting there giving and giving and everybody's looking at you like you've lost your mind. And <laughs> because quite honestly, you kind of have, but, um, the, you know, it's, you got to break your own contract. Right. And so but that doesn't mean that we can't help. And in fact, we're going to do that at the end of this call. I'm going to do a sound healing, but um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's how we met is they came to one of my sound healings years ago now. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. But, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, the, uh, the, the thing that we as healers have to pay attention to as we're trying to give, right? is one, pay attention to how you're feeling. Are you feeling like you're in a place where you have something to give? Mm -hmm. If you are unwell, you should not be doing healing work. Mm -hmm. You should be focusing your healing on yourself. Go figure, novel concept. Um, (laughs) If you are exhausted, you should not be doing healing work. Because go figure, you should be focusing on yourself and <laughs> healing yourself. Novel concept, yes. Um, but you know, this is this is the 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 process. So you've got to really pay attention to what do I have to give, mm-hmm. and how much do I have to give, and don't feel guilty for not giving more. Mm. Okay, because if everybody gives what they have to give, we all get better. Mm. Right, and if you if what you have to give is a good thought. And that's it. Awesome. I'll take your good thought. (laughs) It's fine. There's absolutely no reason why you have to be meditating every day and doing your, your healing work for the planet and joining (laughs) in with thousands of other people. If that's your thing and you're really into it, great, do it. But you don't have to do that for your peace to have an impact. Mm -hmm. You can simply have a thought I just do a blessing. I had a guy on my podcast the other day, Pierre Pradovan, amazing guy talking about blessings. Mm -hmm. And if you could just offer a blessing to the world and just say, I, I, I bless the world with good health. That alone is sufficient. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And to just, Boom, done. You don't have to kill yourself to make a, a, a to make a contribution, okay? Right. Oh. Um, because a lot of us don't have a lot to give right now. We're, you know, I I'm, I don't have kids, but it, I know a lot of parents right now who are at home going, it's all I can do not to kill my children right now. <laughs> <laughs> I 
have a friend of mine who literally was like, yeah, all my friends are sitting there and saying, I've got to homeschool them, blah, blah, blah. And she said, I have a theory. I'm like, what's your theory? She said, keep them alive. That is my job. <laughs> That's my bar. If you're alive, I've done well. I'm like, okay. That's a very forgiving stance, right? You know, it's like, we're all going to do the best we can do. And we may not have a lot to give right now. And so I don't want you to feel guilty if you don't have a lot to give. I want you to be conscious of how much you have to give mm -hmm. and then decide who you want to give it to. You may want to give it to your kids. Mm -hmm. You may want to give it to your mom or your, your spouse or your dog. You know, you may want to give it to somebody other than the planet. That's okay too. Mm -hmm. We are all one. Everything you give to one person goes to everyone. Exactly. Right. Yeah. It, it's, it's okay. And so, you know, the, and, and then I want to talk about, I want to talk about the people who are doing work that is, um, mm, a lot of people would call it uh, positively intentioned prayer. Or unsolicited. Or positive spell work. There we or, go. Wish I had popcorn. Um, unsolicited, yes. Uh, you know, so if, uh, one of the challenges that we run into when we're under stress is that we, we, begin to believe that we have the righteous answer mm. <laughs> and we know what's right for everyone oh. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like mm, you know um and i know i made a comment earlier about you know the selfish is going out and and you know infecting other people and that's that smacks of righteousness mm. um uh, but it's actually science, not righteousness. So <laughs> it's, it is what it is. But, um, the, you know, I'm, the thing that I want to say to you is don't forget that other people have choice. Okay. I may label it selfish if you go out and walk around and infect people, but it's your choice. Mm. And I don't approve of it, but I don't have a right to, to, to tell you that you are not allowed to do it. Um, now, we in civilized society have laws and things like that, and, and the laws are part of living in civilized society. And so, you know, you may have consequences for those actions that are dictated by law. But me as a person, as an individual, I can say that's really not okay. But... I, you know, I mean, there's no point in getting spun up about it. Can I control you? No. Am I going to go out and drag you home? No, because you've been walking around and fit with infected people. I don't want to be anywhere near you. I'm not going to go and drag you home. <laughs> but, but, uh, but, you know, there's, there's this piece of, of putting out energy to try and make people do things that they don't want to do. And that, my friends, is the definition of black magic. Mm. when you are trying to inflict your will on someone else even if you believe it is for the common good it is black magic mm. so white magic is done with intentional permission if you have permission to do the work then it is white magic if you do not have permission to do the work even if it's well-intentioned it is black magic Mm. And so really be careful when you're doing stuff. If you want to send healing to everyone who's sick, okay, S send healing to everyone who is sick, who is willing to receive it. Mm -hmm. That is what takes it from black magic to white magic. If you're willing to receive it, because it's against some people's religion mm. for them to receive your intentions. It's against some people's belief structures. It's against some people's intentions. Some people just want to die. And that's their right too. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you force your healing upon them, you're denying them their right. You know, so, you know, keep that in mind. Wow. Um, and some people need whatever illness they have in order to wake them up to some truth in their life. And if you deny them their illness, then they'll have to find something even more catastrophic to wake them up later. Mm. Because every time you miss a message, the universe amps it up. And so, you know, yeah. <laughs> you be responsible for that. So be very conscious about when you're putting your energy out, be very conscious about how you're putting it out and what you're putting it out towards. 
and, and make it permission based. Make it based on whether or not the person wants to receive it. And, and even if they personally, if you can't ask them personally, mm -hmm. you know, whether or not their higher selves are willing to receive it. Mm -hmm. okay? And if all of your healing that you send out doesn't get received, just intend that it will sit there until someone else wants it and it'll go to the place where it's desired. There's absolutely nothing is ever wasted. Mm. Yes, indeed. There's yeah. a there's a lot of emoting going on over here. Are you? Do you agree? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sort of happy dancing over there. Yeah. No, she's dropping spiritual truth bombs. Like, Ooh. Yeah. I have good intentions, but it's like um, it's like trying to force feed you something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I, be I happy, really... damn it! Right. Yeah. <laughs> Open your mouth! I will make you happy! Your third eye is going to open one way or another! I will wake you up! Oh. <laughs> the world is a spiritual place! Yeah, it's so crazy. It I, is love! <laughs> yeah. I love you! No, no. <laughs> I see that, and like a lot of spiritual people out there, I guess having spiritual temper tantrums, because yeah. of course with the coronavirus thing happened, people have the right to be fearful right now because they are in the process of awakening, and there's people like, oh my God, why are you being so afraid right now? You're messing up this evolving of humanity right now. This is what you need to do. You need to do this. You need to do. But it's like, yo, like. That's some serious spiritual bypass right there. Yeah. And That's my, some serious bypass. Yeah. It had me a, a, like a deep thought about that. I'm like, oh my goodness. Like, could you imagine, like, in the process of your awakening before you awaken, if somebody did that to you? <laughs> <laughs> well, and we've had people in serious awakening for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. um, there's been. Uh, uh, I have been getting phone calls because I do discovery calls. And so um, I get phone calls from people off of my podcast who are just like, uh, <laughs> it went sideways, man. I'm just, I don't, I don't even know. I'm seeing stuff. I'm feeling stuff. I'm pretty sure I have a ghost in my house. <laughs> my cat. <laughs> and I don't know what to do because nobody I know knows anything about this stuff. And what do I do? And I'm like, it's okay. I got you. <laughs> but, you know, literally, I mean, I moved here to Richmond and I had a housekeeper who came in and she saw all the stuff in my house and she was like, are you? I said, yes, I'm a shaman. And she was like, <laughs> I have ghosts in my house. I have a portal in my house and the things move and I've got poltergeists and, da, 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 and no, and, and please don't think I'm crazy. And I'm like, oh, honey, I get it. No. <laughs> she was she was literally in tears because I was the only person she had ever told outside of her family who did not tell her that she needed to get medicated. Mm. And so, you know, it's very tough when this stuff starts showing up. It's very hard when it begins. It's disorienting. It is terrifying. And then you add on it this atmosphere. With yeah. All the stuff that goes with this. Mm -hmm. And it's I, it's just overwhelming. And, you know, be kind to those people. Mm -hmm. yes. They are going to be terrified. We, I mean, we were terrified when we first woke up. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, I was terrified and I'd been raised in the movement. The first time a ghost talked to me out loud, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's, it's some scary shit, man. I have, I have a friend of mine um, who, who, is a shaman and he looked at me years ago and said you know i sometimes i think all of our training is just so that we don't freak out when the weird shit shows up and i'm like yes that's exactly it <laughs> i'm absolutely certain that that is true <laughs> because there is some weird shit out there yeah <laughs> you know and it's just it's it's the way it is and so um you know i would just just be kind to people. They're trying. And, mm -hmm. and if you're one of those people who is having the awakening and bear with me, I'm taking my socks off because it's really warm in this room. <laughs> but if you're one of those people having an, an awakening at this time, you know, 
reach out to, to whoever your teachers are, to reach out to people in chat rooms. And, and if somebody does not give you a kind answer, walk away and go find a better one. Because the, whatever answer the unkind person has given you just shows you that they are not worthy of being your teacher. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, or mentor. So um, take care of yourself in that regard. There are a lot of people with a lot of information out there. And the ones who are worth their salt are always kind. Mm -hmm. Exactly. In a way, I, I envision these people who are going through like this awakening in the beginning process is like a little baby that's like starting to stand up for a little bit, but then the baby fall. And it's like, I'm not going to go to the baby saying, damn it, baby, you're not going to fall again. You got to get up and you got to start walking and running right now. It's like, it's a process. Right. You got this. I'm here with you too. Help to guide you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. So okay. kind. Yes. Do we, uh, I don't know what time we're supposed to be finishing up. So yeah, we've got about 15 minutes left. Okay. Let's talk a little more. <laughs> <laughs> 15 minutes is a long time for a sound healing on video. Oh, yeah, I hear you. Time. So. Yeah, I feel like we'll all be out of this world by the end of that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to worry anybody's driving, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I have to give the disclaimer if you're driving, pull over, you know? <laughs> at least we don't have to worry about that with this. So. Yeah. Absolutely. So, again, you've given us some practical things to keep in mind, you know, about what we're doing with our intentions and also how we can absolutely be. Uh, involved in our self-care and, you know, understand that it's not selfish. I'm really curious to understand what it is that you're, you're doing personally. I love the, you know, the talk that you've given about, you know, spending time in the yard, you know, and being with the earth and also having this uh, environment already set up because you work from home. Um, is there any other part of your daily ritual that you would like to share? Well, first you imply that I have a ritual. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have tried many times in my life to establish a daily ritual and I suck at it. So <laughs> um, there is no daily ritual in my world. Um, uh, but I, what I will say is that um, I have been really paying attention to myself and my needs mm -hmm. and I have been doing very little actually. Um, I have uh, been working on puzzles and uh, cooking and watching Netflix <laughs> and uh, reading and trying not to read too much about all of this, uh, but just enough to keep up to date on what's going on. Yeah. Um, and I've been really sitting with what's true. Um, <laughs> I've traded readings with a friend, um, you know, that's been useful and been doing my own internal um, process on what came out of that. And um, there's been some personal growth work that I'm working on. That's, that's a process for me, uh, but that's pretty much ongoing in my life. Yeah. So right. Nothing new there. <laughs> um, and uh, I've really been slowing down. Um, normally my normal week is, you know, 30 to 40 hours where I'll just, you know, I'll be in front of a computer, I'll be on the phone or I'll be talking to somebody here or there on, on, you know, whatever. And um, I'd say my normal week right now is 10 to 20 hours. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been doing a lot of being still, a lot of just being quiet. Cause you know, the, I told you the pipe burst and created the cascade of events that caused us to move here. And so, you know, the last four months, the, uh, you know, November through the end of February was just a cascade of upset and yes. angst and stress and you know and and just stuff <laughs> and um and so I'm recovering from that you know I'm I'm taking the time to be quiet and to integrate and to heal and to recover and um and I just had a conversation this morning with my uh ritualist training team mm -hmm. I'm I'm training people to be shamans and um and I, I talked to them about, we're going to, um, I'm going to offer up the, I have a program called Inner Peace 101. Mm -hmm. And um, it's about finding emotional safety. Mm -hmm. And given how 
important that is right now. I'm actually gonna do a special version of it for people right now. And I'm gonna launch that. And it's normally a thousand dollar program and we're gonna do it for $200. So, um, and we're gonna do it with a lot more support than, than we normally do because, because when you are afraid it is statistic, it's scientifically proven, as my business partner Kathy is happy to tell me all the time, that you lose 10 points of IQ when you're afraid. Huh. Scientifically proven. That makes sense. And so, yeah, because of that, people are having a harder time parsing what I'm saying to them and the advice that I'm giving and things like that. And so I'm going to actually offer more support for this than I normally do because people need it right now. Mm -hmm. And so it's not set up. I'm not promoting it. I'm just saying, you ask what I'm doing right now. This is what we're doing right now. I literally had this conversation this morning at 10 a.m. So, yeah. um, Yeah. Well, I'd also like to just add in there, um, you know, we have about nine minutes left in the segment. um, But I'd also love for you to just talk about the free gift that you have available for people that register. Because, like, you know, we're talking about physical you know, distancing, there's also that energetic portion, which I feel you cover very well. Yeah, there's, um, so the program that I'm, I'm giving away is called Boundaries for Empaths. It is a PDF download that gives you the instructions. And then if you stay on the mailing list for another couple of days, you'll get a 45 minute coaching call recording that goes into the details of how to do it. But basically it's about learning how to change the way that you hold your energy field, because that's why you're an empath is because you, you hold your energy field in a way that you've got everybody else inside of it. (laughs) Um, And so it shows you how to, to bring your energy field in so that you can be just with yourself, which is immensely helpful in this time. Um, The other thing that I would really uh, recommend is to talk to your guides and talk to yourself and start to filter out the collective consciousness from your energy. Um, One of the things that happens as we start to get stressed out and freaked out is that we do what I call going into the energetic fetal position. You know, we're just like coming in on ourselves and we cut off our crown chakra and our root chakras to isolate ourselves from the angst around us. Problem with that is that we also isolate ourselves from all the energies of the universe and the earth. And so we cease to ground and we cease to be connected to spirit and we become isolated literally. Mm -hmm. Fine for a short term defense thing. Yeah. You know, but it's really only meant to last about 15 minutes (laughs) and then you're supposed to connect back in. Um, (laughs) And if, especially if you've come out of a challenged childhood where you felt like you were under attack a lot, Um, it is often a default mechanism Mm -hmm. and, you know, we can tend to live there and that's what creates energy vampires because if you have no access to, to earth or sky, you have no access to energy yourself. So you have to take it from others. Um, and again, no judgment. It just is a consequence of Mm -hmm. having had a problem childhood. Um, but when you learn how to open back up to that, when you open back up to earth and sky and, um, you know, I'll, I'll post the link to the tree meditation on the bottom of the the Facebook live when we're done. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's a tree meditation I put up on YouTube the other day, because I was talking about this, that'll help you open back up to earth and sky. And Mm -hmm. it's just, you, you just become a tree, you know, you, you, you cycle the energy in and you, it connects you back in. And when I had not filtered that energy out for myself, I was finding that I was clamping down and clamping down and clamping down and clamping down. And every time I would get like angsty and upset and, you know, fearful and dis- and, and disoriented even, I was like, uh, it's like I lost my foundation and because I did, I lost my grounding. Right? Mm-hmm. And so I would just be like, Oh, nope. Time to ground and be a tree. Okay. Oh, I feel so much better now. Okay. You know? <laughs> but it, you have to pay attention to that. Yeah. And, um, you know, you can, if you've protected your house, you can actually build that into your protections on your house, mm-hmm. that it helps filter those things out. 
Um, my husband does customer service from home right now. And so a lot of angsty people are calling up on the phone. And I actually put a vortex under his desk for negative energy. Nice. Um, and I screwed up the first time I did it because I just put it to suck their energy, their negative energy out of the room. Yeah. And I forgot to suck his negative energy that was coming out of being in interaction with them. So <laughs> just built up all this ack. And I walked in and I was like, wow, like, I know I'm smudging every day, but it's not really, I'm like, okay, I forgot to do that. Let me do that. <laughs> my bad. <Yeah>. My bad. <laughs> my bad. I'll fix that. Um, so, you know, there's lots of energetics that you can do to support the process. Right. And if you want to know how I do any of these things, magic is intention. If you want to do it, just intend to do it. Be focused and intent on your in, on, on what you want to create and just know that it will happen when you say to do it. Mm. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. Do not make it more complicated than that. Right. Everybody who's new always wants to make it complicated. How many candles do I need? How many? Yeah. Do I have to do it on a full moon or a new moon? Yeah. Just do it. Yeah. <laughs> Marketing. Focus, direct, and know. That's it. It's all yeah. magic takes. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, I also want to welcome Deborah and Naya to the stream because you're just in time for Kelly's time <laughs> healing. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, we've got about five minutes left. Okay. Take it away. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to do a sound healing. And the, the healing that I'm doing, I'm going to say the intention out loud. Uh, so that you guys know, uh, I am sending this healing out to everybody who ever will listen to this recording, not just to the people on the call now. Um, and I am sending it out to the world, to anyone who wishes to receive it. Okay. And we're going to do it. This is going to be an emotional healing because when we are emotionally well, dis-ease goes away. So... Okay, I'm gonna back up from the mic so I don't peg it. <laughs> I Ah, 
Thank you so much, Kelly. Yeah. That was profoundly powerful. <laughs> you are profoundly powerful. <laughs> you were right. I could have gone for 15 minutes. <laughs> we are so happy and grateful to have you with us and that you would be so generous to share your gifts. Mm, my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, we are, we are going to sit in this and we're going to drink some water yeah. and, <laughs> and get a little grounded and in appreciation for Kelly. Thank you so much. You can find her freebies and also her link um, in the details, as well as all of the wonderful um, information that we've been sharing by email when you register. So thank you again, Kelly. Thanks. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye.